Peace for having my prosperity family. How we doing out there? Bitcoin block bullies, cryptopreneurs. How goes the day for those that are out there in this space? And what I'm going to do is let the uh, chat fill in real quick. I'm also going to share this out on uh, social media sites so that others will be able to tune in. I'm going to get this shared out real quick. One second. And like I say, right now, what we're going to do is let the chat fill in pretty much. Yo, 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 what's going on, Brother Kennedy? Peace, power, and prosperity. Grand Rising family. How's the family doing during these uh crazy times? I hope all is truly well. Hope you're in high spirits. Let's see what is. I wonder if it's showing over here on Facebook. Hey, Brother Kennedy, go check on Facebook and see if that screen is visible. Because for some reason, right now, I'm not seeing the, uh, let me see. Yeah, I'm not seeing the screen being reflected on my side. Early bird edition right now for those that will be tuning in. You already know what time it is, New Money Matrix Mondays. We're going to open up with a story, um, JP Morgan flipping the script on their outlook on cryptocurrency. Not just Bitcoin, but cryptocurrency as a whole. Also, if you can, family, please help assist me in sharing this out. Please help assist me in sharing this out as well. All right. Please help assist me in sharing this out. Let me see. Trying to make sure everything's coming through clearly. What's going on, Brother Tim, Brother Michael? Okay, what's going on over here on uh, Facebook? Can you see on Facebook? Let me know. Let me know if it's visible on Facebook or not. Let me know if it's visible on Facebook or not. I don't know what's going on. I did have it visible. Let me see if I can, uh, I think there's another way I can share screen. Let me see, use camera. Okay, you see it clear on Facebook? Okay, cool, cool, cool. I just wanted to make sure. I just wanted to make sure. What's going on, Brother Briggs? I just wanted to make sure everything was coming through clearly. So we can see, depending on, you know, where entries may have been made at, the market is either up or down for you. Um, Ethereum pretty much moving from areas of around, you know, right above $200 shooting up uh, pretty nicely up to around 245 Upper two hundred and uh, two hundred and forty dollar levels before retracing back down. Bitcoin itself moving, but Ethereum moving a lot more so than Bitcoin, which is one reason why I have taken the time out to uh, check out. Let me get it pulled up over here. This uh, synthetic. ETH to BTC ratio pair, which I'll cover today. Also, we'll take a look at the SNX auto staking, which allows you to delegate and turn your synthetics network staking on automatic, utilizing SNX.link forward slash staking.
We're going to take a look at Rocket Pool tokenizing their staking as well. Interesting. Um, some interesting things going on in the DeFi space. We will be taking a look at DeFi rates compared to today's savings rate, average savings rate at uh, a number of different financial institutions. Also, we'll take a look at loan scan to see what the different rates are out there on different platforms. Like I say, opening up with the JP Morgan story, seeing what their outlook on cryptocurrency is and how much it's changed. Like I said, family, if you can, if you can, please help assist me in sharing this out. Tag friends. In fact, let me go ahead and make this. Uh, I know it's probably not. Let me see. There we go. Let me turn this on public over here. There we go. So we are on public on the uh, YouTube video now. We are on public on the YouTube video. Thank everybody for tuning in. Um, it is going on 8.06 a.m. Central Chicago time. What we're looking at right now is a heat map of the different cryptocurrencies, you know, their uh, gains and losses. That's it. That's it. That's it. It's a Thank you for anyone that said bless you. Bless you. Um, now, like I said, there was a synthetic token that went live on the UMA platform uh, a couple weeks ago. And it's the ETH, the BTC price list. Now, right now, it doesn't have a price, right? Meaning that it's, it's, it's I'm, I'm going to get into the article for you. I'm going to explain everything for you as much as I can. Uh, let me see. I think I am going to do an uh, early rise and show a new Money Matrix podcast as well. So let me get that up and running. We're going to go live at around 810. So family, if you can, please help assist me in sharing this out. Please help assist me in sharing this out. Let me go ahead and get these things sent out real quick. Let me go ahead and get everything pulled up. This is Ethereum on the daily, above all major moving averages. Uh, you know, a, a, a pullback was imminent at the reach and the heights that we did. Right now, you look to be forming what could be a double tweezer of bottom. We'll uh, take a uh, deeper look at that here in a minute. We'll be using CoinGecko for the top 20 coins. I'm going to try to make this a quick show, though. In all honesty, I'm going to try to make this, make this a quick show. So let's go ahead. What time is it? 808. Let me get the podcast up and running real quick. Give me one second. Let me put this on so I don't get any interruptions. Let me close everything up real quick. That way I don't get any interruptions. There we go. All right, let me get the podcast up and running. For those that don't know, I do have a podcast available on iTunes as well as Spotify, as well as Anchor.fm. It is called the New Money Matrix Podcast. Check it out if you ever get, um, let's see. I want a new episode. Let me get this up and running real quick, and then we're going to take off, family. There we go. Now, we are coming up on a monthly. It is June 1st, 2020. It is June 1st, 2020. Uh, the crypto markets are looking uh, fairly good. 
crypto markets are looking fairly good. And let me go ahead and reintroduce myself and get this started. Peace, power, and prosperity, family. How we doing out there? Y'all already know what time it is. It's the Bitcoin Block Bully coming to you once again with an early rising show of Coffee and Crypto. Uh, live streaming right now via Facebook, YouTube, and recording New Money Matrix podcast that can be heard on iTunes, Spotify, as well as anchor.fm. All you got to do is look up New Money Matrix. Um, should be the only one. Only one up under that uh that that banner. Um, as we can see, even though the heat map is looking quite red, uh, for the most part, the crypto market is up. For the most part, the crypto market is up. This is showing the last 24 hours worth of price action. Uh, Bitcoin dominance right now coming in at a 65.59%, right now down 0.13% within the last 24 hours. And it is consolidated around that ninety five hundred dollar area showing that it does have some fairly uh strong support around there um ethereum i mean moving from you know we've been been watching this thing and ended around 200 uh up right now 238 dollars running up to around 240 245. <laughs> look at the chart on eth let's see Yeah, out of the top coins, ETH right now is uh, moving a lot more so than the rest. So we're going to come back and take a look at that. Let's go ahead and get into our first story. I welcome everybody that is taking the time out to tune in with me today. I am welcoming everybody that is taking the time out to tune in with me today. Peace, Queen. Peace, Brother James. Brother Jamal, what's going on? Peace, power, and prosperity. Thank you for tuning in, broski. Salute. Salute. Go ahead and stay tuned, bro. I'm about to uh, bring some nice information. So go ahead and tune in with me. Stay tuned in. Um, covering the first story, JP Morgan, Bitcoin's biggest enemy, suddenly appears to be going all in on crypto. Uh, this is brought to you by Forbes. This is a Forbes article. Um, and it was released May 30th, so within the last couple of days. Um, and it goes on to state, JP Morgan, the largest U.S. bank by assets has been waging a war of words with bitcoin and cryptocurrency for years um the bitcoin price has swung wildly since jp morgan chief executive jamie diamond called bitcoin a fraud in september of 2017 rising to around twenty thousand dollars per bitcoin before crashing under four thousand dollars twice now this is the thing and i want to clear this up the way that they're stating it right here it is it makes it appear that he's called it a fraud after the rise but in all actuality those that have been in this space for any amount of time can remember the first time we ever hit the five thousand dollar mark is when jamie diamond came out and called it a fraud said if you've seen any of you know his uh employees investing in it they were fired and just throwing out all this shade against bitcoin and bitcoin dropped to around twenty five hundred dollars now lo and behold one of the biggest investors i believe in bitcoin's futures contracts if i'm not mistaken i could be wrong on the actual instrument that they bought i don't know if it's actual physical bitcoin but one of the hugest investors of a bitcoin derivative unless it was a actual bitcoin was jp morgan for those that remember that this is 2017 right going on uh moving out of um summer into the fall if i'm not mistaken if i'm not mistaken but uh, anyways they go on to state now jp morgan's turbulent relationship with bitcoin appears to be rapidly softening after the bank added its first crypto exchange customers and diamond reportedly hosted secret meetings with the boss of major bitcoin and crypto exchange coinbase now these secret meetings for those or anyone that has read the creature from jekyll island Whereas um, some of the most wealthiest individuals and bankers met up on Jekyll Island, which is right outside of where is Jekyll Island? Right outside of New Jersey, New York. No, Georgia, Georgia, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, let me let me back check that real quick. Let me see real quick. Give me one second. Let me figure out exactly what Jekyll Island was. That way I'm not spreading any type of false information. The individuals can do a. Uh, yeah, it's an island in Glen County, right? Right outside of Georgia. Um, if you if you're unfamiliar with the story, if you're unfamiliar with the story, go ahead and check it out. If you're unfamiliar with the story, go ahead and check it out. Um, hold on, let me get this pulled back up now. Give me one second. Okay, so 
you know, and that was where they came together and planned the whole Federal Reserve. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, that's where they came and planned the Federal Reserve System. It was the creation of the Federal Reserve System, that secret meeting. So seeing these meetings transpire now in 2020 sort of gives you that deja vu feeling. Um, it goes on to state that earlier this month, JP Morgan signed Coinbase and rival Bitcoin and crypto exchange Gemini after a lengthy vetting period. It was first reported by Wall Street Journal. So what has happened now is JP Morgan has been the mediator between two rival cryptocurrency exchanges, Coinbase and Gemini. Gemini, um, surprisingly enough, twin energy being created by the twins, the Winklevoss twins. Um, and right now we are in the Gemini uh, state of mind with all that's going on right now. It's kind of crazy. But um, anyways, it goes on to say that JP Morgan approved the two Bitcoin exchanges accounts last month, and it is already processing transactions, potentially, potentially signaling the end of the crypto industry's banking woes. The Bitcoin and cryptocurrency community has complained for years that banks, including JP Morgan, have denied them services and blocked accounts that dealt with crypto uh, businesses. Now, I believe JP Morgan also just paid if I'm not mistaken, $2.5 million in fines for overcharging individuals for um, cryptocurrency transactions, if I'm not mistaken. Um, meanwhile, it has emerged that Jamie Dimon has been hosting secret meetings with Coinbase chief executive Brian Armstrong since 2018. Author Jeff Roberts revealed in his book, Kings of Crypto, which I will be obtaining in this book. Um, I heard a podcast between the individuals, and it does seem like it could be something interesting to put in the uh, catalog. It goes on to state that, ironically, Brian Armstrong, and Brian Armstrong and Jamie Dimon of J.P. Morgan, who was the biggest enemy of Bitcoin, has passed on it, excuse me, has pissed on it for years. It turns out that they were having secret meetings in 2018 at J.P. Morgan's headquarters. Um, Roberts told Laura Shen's Unchained podcast, which is the one that I was listening to while promoting the book, which charts Coinbase's rise to the top of the crypto industry. However, J.P. Morgan's interest in the cryptocurrencies might not extend all the way to Bitcoin just yet. We are supportive of cryptocurrencies as long as they are properly controlled and regulated. Umar Farouk, JP Morgan's head uh, or Farouk, uh, JP Morgan's head of digital treasury services and blockchain said back in 2017. JP Morgan launched its own answer to Bitcoin last year. For those that aren't familiar, JP Coin is pegged to the dollar and aimed at speeding up and reducing the cost of global payments. So they've gotten their cryptocurrency created already. Um, they've been in the in the space. Sometimes you gotta look left when they tell you to look right. So always remember that. Um, moving along, just some most up re recent uh, comings and goings within the crypto space, especially the DeFi space. For those that are, are familiar with Rocket Pool, um, they have now created tokenized staking, um, and it goes on to state that we're excited to reveal um, some big improvements to Rocket Pool. <coughs> which is a decentralized staking network for ETH 2.0. These big changes have been inspired by feedback from our community over many months and have also allowed us to implement some additional features that we've been planning. For those that aren't familiar, Ethereum right now runs on the proof of work uh, consensus, meaning that there is a number of different miners that are um, that have mining rigs, computational uh, power and energy running 24 hours a day to confirm the transactions as well as create new um, coins um, within the cryptocurrency space. Now, what's going on is that Ethereum is moving from the ever energy sucking proof of work consensus and moving over to the more energy efficient proof of stake consensus, where much like the law of attraction, just from holding certain cryptocurrencies in a specific wallet, you are able to attract or receive what are known as staking rewards, i.e. That sometimes that cryptocurrency in small amounts or other cryptocurrencies that are paid out as an incentive of that individual or you staking on the network. Um, now, what they've done is created a pool because the thing about staking Ethereum, you have to have 33, if I'm not mistaken, 33, it might be 32 or 33 Ethereum in order to stake. So they've created a pool for individuals to come together and pull their funds together in order to stake with. Um, it goes on to state that such are these changes that we're making this a significant upgrade to the platform and calling it Rocket Pool 2.0. We'll outline all the major changes below and their differences or their differences from version 2.0. Um, this is 2.5, excuse me. Um, and differences from version 2.0 are initial release that is that supported ETH.2 and the Beacon Chain. Um, they said they've updated their whitelist and fact to reflect these changes and our website will be updated soon. 
So moving right along, they're saying that when a user deposits, and they're talking about the tokenized staking deposits, um, when a user deposits into the Rocket Pool network, they will instantly receive RETH, a token which represents a tokenized staking deposit and rewards it gains over time in the Rocket Pool network. This token does not need to be locked within the network to gain rewards, and it can be traded, sold, or held as the user's desire, all from the moment they deposit ETH for staking. This token can instantly be used in the DeFi apps and allows DEXs or decentralized exchanges wallets the ability to offer instant staking services. Importantly, this token also provides Rocket Pool users with liquidity over phases zero and one of the ETH.2 rollout in which any staking deposit is locked. When smart contracts are natively enabled on ETH 2.0 during the phase two, a smart contract will be deployed and will allow users with the RETH token to burn it for Ethereum. You will also now be able to deposit into Rocket Pool with, a little, with as little as 0.01 ETH. And for you whales out there, there's no maximum limit. Um, what's different from 2.0? Well, RETH did exist in Rocket 2.0, but it was a one-to-one -one token ratio that could be traded for BETH when the user's take staking duration was completed, minimum three months. It is now much more flexible and has a dynamic trade-in ratio for BETH or a BETH. Um, its value increases as the Rocket Pool network earns rewards. Minimum, the minimum deposit limit has been reduced significantly, and the maximum limit has been lifted entirely. Continuous staking. Since RETH is minted upon deposit, we have now eliminated the need for staking durations in the rocket pool. Node operators also benefit greatly from this as they can come and go in the network as they please. They no longer need to be locked in for any specific duration. Now that is a beautiful feat. Um, for those that are operating in the decentralized space, know how important it is to keep <coughs> um, constant control and custody of your currency. Um, and them now allowing you not to be locked into any type of contract per se is um is beautiful. Uh, any protests in Chicago? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, a lot of protests in Chicago. Um, it was it was it was pretty peaceful. Um, there was a little bit of uh, violence that 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 uh ensured a lot of looting going on out here though. They burnt up. Man, they just, they done burnt up River Oaks Mall, broken the River Oaks Mall, burnt them down. Uh, they just burnt the uh, Dollar Tree down on 95th and Halsted. Um, they hit the, the uh, Magnificent Mall, if I'm not mistaken, hit the Gucci store, hit a couple of stores and whatnot. But, you know, it is what it is. Uh, anyways, going on, <clears throat> it goes on to state. And I thank everybody that's tuning in right now for this early rising show. Also, family, if you can, please help assist me in sharing this out. Share this out. But um, uh, what do we leave off at? All oh, right, right, right. Everybody, anyone can withdraw from the network. You're not locked in at any time, like I said, which is uh, beautiful. Um, now, what's the different? What's different from 2.0? Previously, if you deposited into Rocket Pool, you would have to select a staking duration, as seen in the demo, for depositing into the network. <clears throat> Durations were three months, six months, or 12 months. This introduced a problem in phase 0, 0, and 1, where validators would sit idly after their staking duration completed, not earning any more rewards on their deposit. This is no longer the case. Node operators can stake all the way up to phase two if they wish, at which point ETH can be withdrawn from the network. Extra deposit safety. Due to the change in the network mechanics, the V2.5 brings, that V2.5, version 2.5 brings, Rocket Pool can now offer even more safety for user deposits. All losses that are incurred when a node operator finishes staking with less than 16 Ethereum in total are now socialized across the whole network. This means that your deposit cannot be assigned to a bad node. All RETH holders share the risk of nodes being slashed or penalized equally. If a node fails, all holders lose a tiny amount of value rather than one unlucky person losing everything. Now, what's different from 2.0? Previously, when the deposit arrived into the Rocket Pool network, it was split up into chunks of four Ethereum and spread randomly around the network's node operators. <clears throat> this provided some risk mitigation for large deposits. Losses for stakers are now socialized over the whole network, removing the need to spread out deposits this way. It also provided deposits, deposit protection against slashing events, which was not previously possible. Node operators, though, are still accountable for their penalties and will absorb any losses if their validators earn less than 32 ETH. 
This makes them economically bonded to the perform in the same way as previously. As long as a node performs well, it stands to earn extra rewards in the network from commissions charged on deposits and staking rewards. This increases the ROI for node operators over staking solo where all the same perimeters apply. Give me one second, family. Going to apologize for that. <clears throat> Anyways, moving along. Uh, what do we leave off at? Let me see. No commission rates. The temporary. How much more of this? I may come back and just do a full out story and tutorial on this. Yeah, because it's still a lot to read. I want to get through a, a couple of more stories, but definitely check out Rocket Pool. Like I said, they've tokenized their staking platform. Definitely check that out. Um, moving right along. Once again, like I said, for those that are utilizing the SNX network, they now have smart contracts that are able to set your staking rewards on auto claim. SNX.link forward slash staking is one such platform. You also are able to trade from this platform as well. Once you have connected it to a wallet that does hold some amount of SNX as well as synthetic United States dollars in it. <clears throat> so for any stakers out there, definitely check this out. Now, looking at the different rates across the market, as we can see, just for the stable currencies right now, you can earn, um, let me see, as of right now, an average of 1.47% in DAI and an average of 2.18% in USDC. Now, they also have some very high rates for USDT since it's been added to some of the platforms as well. Um, now, what I want to go and sort of put this up against are the savings rates, best savings rate of uh, for May 2020. This is bought from nerdwallet.com. And this is a summary of the best savings rates within this month or last month, excuse me. As we can see, Marcus by Goldman Sachs was giving away 1.3% with zero uh, minimum balance. Uh, American Express was doing 1.3%, zero minimum balance. Alien, 1.2% with a $100 minimum balance. Alley with 1.25% with a zero minimum balance. Uh, Citizens Access was giving a 1.3% with a $5,000 minimum balance, though. Um, PinFed Credit Union giving away 1.15% with a $5 minimum balance. Barclays giving away 1.15% with a 0% minimum balance. Citibank doing 1.25% with a $100 minimum balance. Uh, Varro, or Vero, depending on how they pronounce it, 1.41%, which is the highest I've seen so far with a 0%, uh, zero minimum balance, 1.41%. Tab Bank giving 1.10%, zero minimum balance. Live Oak Bank giving 1.35% with a zero minimal balance and Bank 7 giving 1.4% with a zero, no, a one cent minimal balance. So you can compare on average, we'll say 1.3% to what do we have right now? 1.47 and 2.18%. Um, now, if we look at Loan Scan, which shows you a number of different um, USDT giving you 4% right now on Aave. But this shows you a number of different stable coins and the interest rates that they give you on different platforms. Um, True USD giving up 4.05% right now on Aave. BUSD, which is the Binance stable coin, giving you 3.9% right now on Aave as they have integrated, graded as a number of other platforms have the um, Binance United States dollar token. Now, you're also able to check out the different lending rates in non stable cryptocurrencies, right? So right now, um, Aave is giving 0.16% in Ethereum, 6.7% um, right now from DDEX with WBTC, which is wrapped Bitcoin. Those are some nice gains, nice, nice uh, interest rates. Um, Nuo right now giving 2.5% for ZRX, 
compound giving 0.7 percent let's see basic attention token is pretty small 0.07 percent pretty much across the board uh rep giving 2.66 percent on nuo maker 1.2 percent on ave ltc giving 3.8 percent on blockfi for those that are not familiar with uh boh or bank of hodlers they do have some very interesting interest rates though you do end up giving custody when utilizing this platform specifically the decentralized finance platforms you do not give up your um custody when you utilize them as it is connected from wallet to contract so everything is uh pretty much owned by the wallet that you hold the private keys to um now bank of hodlers is let me let this load up Here we go. Bank of Hodlers is, though, insured by BitGo, which is a top insurance, uh, digital asset insurance company within the space. Um, and you can see they're giving some very nice interest rates 11.5% on DAI, 11.5% on True USD, 11.5% on BUSD, 11.5% on USDC. And then they got the um, non stable currency, 7% for Bitcoin, 7% for Ethereum, 11.5% um, for USDT, Paxos as well. 3.04% on uh, Stellar Lumens, 4.07% on uh, uh, Rip XRP, excuse me, not Ripple, and 3.04% on Basic Attention Token. So some very nice rates on Bank of Hodlers, but once again, you do give up custody of your fund. Um, let's get into now. Yeah, I'll save this last story for um, after we get into the top 20. Let me run through the top 20 for you real quick. Show you what's been going on in this space, but I do want to hit this ETH BTC price of synthetic token. And I think, yeah, I did just erase coin gecko. Let's see. Bring this back up. Here we go. Um, as of right now, you got 271,083,967,244 dollars uh, in the more as a market cap. 24 hour volume right now is 57 billion two hundred and sixty one million sixty eight thousand one hundred and three dollars. Coming in number one, you got Big Bang Kang, Bitcoin trading at 9.4, uh, trading up 9.4%, coming in at $9,551. Um, no, that's in the last seven days. Actually, within the last 24 hours, you're down uh, 0.2%. Let me see. Ethereum coming in at $238, uh, pretty much even within the last 24 hours, just now seeing a loss of 0.2% within the last hour. Tether, which is the cryptocurrency equivalent to the United States dollar, coming in right now at 99 cents, up 0.5% within the last seven days. Now, um, look at Ethereum versus Bitcoin. Ethereum is up double, almost to the T in US dollars, the amount that Bitcoin is, right? Right? Which is one reason why I'm going to go over this asset, the synthetic token right here in a minute. Coming in number four, you got XRP coming at 20 cents, up 5.3% within the last seven days, down 2.5% within the last 24. Bitcoin Cash coming in number five, you got $242 trading. Down 2.3% against the US dollar. Coming in number six, you got Bitcoin SV Satoshi's vision trading at $193, down 2.3% within the last 24. Litecoin coming in at number seven, trading at $46.28, down 1.5% within the last 24. Coming in number nine, you got EOS down 1.6% within the last 24, trading at $2.70. Um, oh, I think I missed Binance. Binance coin trading at $17.36, down 2.1% within the last 24 hours, up 0.2% within the last hour. Coming in number 10, you got Cardano trading at $0.07, cent, up 52% within the last seven days. Wow. A 52% return within the last seven days with Cardano family, down 4.8% right now within the last 24. Coming in number 11, we got Tezos, who's up 10% within the last seven days, down 0.2% within the last 24, up 0.9% within the last hour. Coming in number 12, we got Chainlink, up 14% within the last 24, no, within the last 14 day, seven days, excuse me, up 3.1% within the last 24, 0.6% within the last hour. So Chainlink seeing a, a nice amount of interest. Coming in number 13, we got Stellar Lumens up 16% within the last seven days. 1.5% loss within the last 24, 0.7% gain within the last hour. Coming in number 14, you got Crypto.com coin up 19% within the last seven days, 2.7% within the last 24 hours, and 0.4% within the last hour. OK, Bit, OK Bitcoin, uh, which is the native currency of the uh, OKEX uh, platform, up one point. 
No, up 7.9% within the last 24, down 0.4% within the last hour. Coming in number 16, you got Leo token trading at $1.16, only up 1.7% within the last seven days, down 2.3% within the last hour. Coming in number 17, we got Monero trading at $64.89, top privacy coin at that, up 6.6% within the last seven days, down almost 5% within the last 24 hours. Coming in number 18, you got Tron. Damn, what happened to Dash? Dash used to be right behind Monero. Now Dash is above or outside of the top 20. Coming in number 18, we got Tron trading at a penny. Right now up 14.9% within the last 24 hours. No, excuse me, last seven days. Down 2.3% within the last 24. Coming in number 19, you got Huobi token up 6.3% within the last seven days. Down 0.8% within the last 24 hours. And coming in last but not least, you got Ethereum Classic. Trading up 6.4% within the last seven days, down 4.8% within the last 24 hours. Family, that is your top 20 coins within the coin market cap. Now, seeing this gain of Ethereum versus Bitcoin is going to give you um, more insight of why this token could be valuable to individual investors. So it goes on to state that a synthetic token to track ETH versus BTC collateralized with DAI has been built using UMA's price infrastructure, and it is available on Uniswap V2. Um, and this was released about a week, maybe maybe two weeks ago. When was this released? May 20th. It's uh June 1st. Um, it goes on to state. You see at approximately 1558 UTC. The first ETH versus BTC synthetic token was created on the Ethereum mainnet on May 20th, 2020. This is the first token to be built using UMA's priceless synthetic token infrastructure. Um, the token is uh, currently available on Uniswap V2. Now, they do have a warning. This is an experimental alpha release. Although the code has been audited and detailed by Open Zeppelin, which you can check out, this is a decentralized product that no one, no one, including the core development team, can control. The mechanisms behind this design have not been proven in the wild. Users should proceed with extreme caution. Now, what does this ETH BTC synthetic token do? This token tracks the ETH to BTC price ratio. If Ethereum outperforms Bitcoin, the token value will go up. If ETH underperforms, the token value will decrease. The token expires on August 1st, 2020. So it's almost like a call option. Um, currently, one Ethereum for versus BTC token is worth approximately 0.02 DAI, which is roughly around $0.02 cent on Uniswap. The token is collateralized with DAI and will settle to ETH BTC value as reported by the UMA, uh, UMA um dvm on the exp expiry date of august 1st 2020. for example if the ETH btc ratio is 0 0.03 expiry each token will be redeemable at 0 0.03 uh die now who can create ETH to btc tokens the ETH to btc contract is permissionless and accessible to anyone on the ethereum blockchain this means anyone can act as a token sponsor and mint new ETH to btc tokens by depositing die as collateral Token sponsors can use UMA's open source command line tooling to interact with the contract, or they can write their own tooling. Token sponsors are responsible for maintaining adequate collateralization ratio, excuse me, collateralization in the ETH to BTC contract to avoid liquidation. A token sponsor who mints and then sells an ETH to BTC token is short ETH to BTC as they have the opposite economic risk as the EDBTC token holder. The contract does require a 120% token collateralization ratio. You can get it on Uniswap. Now, what is the price of synthetic token? Synthetic tokens are collateral backed tokens whose value fluctuates depending on the token's reference index. Priceless synthetic tokens do this without requiring any sort of on-chain price fee to determine if the contract is correctly collateralized. The priceless design minimizes Oracle usage by using only an oracle to resolve disputed liquidations, which are designed to be very rare. And there's more details that uh, will be coming available um, or are available. Let me see what is this. We'll open that up and let that uh, upload. It goes on to state that the ETH to BTC token is the first DeFi product to use a priceless design on mainnet. It is an experiment to learn if oracle usage can truly be minimized and to what extent. For example, it's possible that zero uh, zero oracle calls will be needed at all during the lifetime of this token. Excuse me, it is possible that zero oracle calls will be needed at uh, all during the lifetime of this token. The stores is open. Yeah. Family Dollar. Yeah. What about Maya? Yeah. All right, cool. Um, yeah, they, they closed a the number of stores out here yesterday, family. So you know, had to check in and make sure everything's back up and running right now.
go out and pick up, you know, what may be needed uh, shortly after this video is made. So I'm gonna be wrapping this up here in a minute. Um, the gas station is not. Okay. Um, let me see. We will learn a lot in the coming weeks when we will discuss our results and analysts. Uh, an analysis publicly. Now, why is the ETH to BTC the first synthetic? The ETH to BTC was selected by the UMA community as the first test for the price of synthetic design because it's DeFi centric, but not too serious. This is the first token. This first token is still experimental. So it feels wise to choose a product that appeals to hardcore DeFi natives, the type that might want to bet on ETH outperforming and who best understand the risk of new things. This one is definitely for the nerves, as they say, or for those that are financially inclined should i say because i'm going to call myself a nerd from a long shot though i may be turning into one ain't no telling um anyways and basically what they're saying is that this is a token that those that believe ethereum is able to outperform bitcoin would invest in per se that a token also offers access to a type of risk that wasn't easily accessible before historically people have traded eth versus btc by swapping ethereum for bitcoin and vice versa Never before have people been able to trade the value of the index itself. This token allows users to trade ETH versus BTC without needing to take on any of the underlying ETH to BTC exposure. Now, can this token be shut down? There are no admin keys or proxy contracts to offer centralized control of this token. UMA tokens holders can initiate an emergency shutdown of token contracts through an on-chain vote if they believe that the token contracts pose a security or economic risk to the system. Once initiated, those votes require at least 48 hours to pass, allowing token contract participants to wind down their position. What's next? In addition to refining the infrastructure used to create price of synthetic tokens, the UMA team is building on is working on building perpetual tokens with our friends at Balancer Labs. Um, they do have a review. I may do this on a separate. Yeah, I'm gonna bring all these up and do these on a separate uh separate uh podcast. Let me see. To learn more, follow them. Definitely, if you're looking to learn what's going on in this space, family, follow these platforms on the Twitter accounts. They will keep you upgraded and updated on updated and upgraded on what's going on with the platform. Now, last but not least, let's come over here and take a look at the charts real quick. Family, I'm gonna come back over. Let me see if we got any questions, comments from anybody right now. Let me know if we got any questions or comments from anybody right now. Bitcoin bouncing very nicely off of the two three six, finding very good support, but still getting that. If you look at it right. You're still creating lower highs. You got to come and actually crack. Let me see. First, we want to get back above the high of 99.57, then come back and crack the high of 10,079 in order to see that uh, order to see that continuation. Right now, the 21-day exponential moving average does come in at 92.45. So I do believe if we hold above the $9,200 areas, we can see continuation to the upside. If that does fail, you do have the 236 or the Fibonacci retracement level coming in and coinciding almost with the 55-day uh, exponential. The 236 is at 88.23. The 55 exponential is at 86.95. So you know, it gives you a little leeway to work with. Always remember, you can come back and retest both Fib levels and moving averages to the downside. Let me let this load up. There we go. I don't like things uh, loading in the background. It can mess up the feed that's coming in for those that are uh, listening in right now. Let me see if we got any questions or comments before I move along. I know we've been going through a lot right here. Let me see. We got a couple of uh, individuals checking, tuning in on uh, on YouTube. Peace, power, and prosperity to those that are tuning in. And we got a couple of individuals tuning in on Facebook. All right, cool. We can continue on. So, um, like I say, as long as Bitcoin is definitely holding above that $9,500 area, which surprisingly enough, um, what are we looking at right here? Let me open this up a little bit more. There we go. It's broke out of this. Get rid of that now. There we go. Bitcoin coming up. Nice dump back down to the 55 day exponential. Bounce from there. Found your footing at the 21 day, but you are starting to fail at 21 day, which is at 92.57. Right now, still holding that $9,500 area, though it does look like, let me see, let's see. 
Okay, so no, moving averages are still prostrating to the upside nicely. This is on a two hour chart. Uh, RSI is showing what? RSI is showing you uh, trying to move to the upside a little more. Let me try to get past that little level of resistance right there on RSI. MACD, what do we got on the MACD? MACD is showing a loss of negative momentum and a possible crossover of the MACD and the signal line moving back to the upside. Pay attention to that. This is on a two hour. Let's see on a daily. In fact, one thing I definitely want to pay attention to right now is the monthly. How did the monthly close? Look at that. For the first time, we got a monthly. Let me see. Since since the first of January, right now we got a monthly positive momentum bar starting to form and a possible crossover of the. Now this right here could man, this right here could definitely be kind of bullish on the monthly. We got a MACD crossing over, possibly crossing over the signal line on the monthly. Remember, this is a monthly chart, so it does take a month for these things to play out. This, that does look good. Then on the monthly, what do we got on the uh, weekly? Let's see, what do we got on the weekly? Nice. We already had our crossover on the weekly. Oh, hold on. There we go. Positive momentum continues to build on the weekly. Also finding support above our previous resistance on the MACD. Excuse me, on the RSI. Excuse me, on the RSI. That's around that 55% uh, 55 level. As long as you're above all major moving averages, all is truly well. Um, let me see on the weekly, you can have a pullback back down to around the lower $8,000 levels. So be on the lookout for that. Don't think that everything is just, you know, upside from here. Bitcoin can always come and do that pump fake and pull, have that major pullback. Have that major pullback. Though on a daily, you really want to, really don't want to see you come and break this $8,600 level right here. You really don't want to see that get broke to the downside. Ethereum, on the other hand, right now, continuing to move up right now, coming in at $239.18. This is the one that um, I've been watching for the longest. One that I'm definitely bullish on, one that I've dived into utilizing the DeFi space and one that, you know, not any type of financial advice. In fact, I should have put this out in the beginning of the video. Family, don't take anything that I'm saying today or any day ever as financial advice. This is for shits and giggles. We're kicking the bobos. This is just for educational purposes only. Just for educational purposes. All right. Um, with that being said, Ethereum is, is, is well above major moving averages, topping out though up here around the uh, RSI. You already got rejected once, came back down. So like, it looks like you're looking for another move back to the upside. Um, MACD is looking very good. Nice positive momentum coming in. Very bullish. Um, MACD is signal line prostrating to the upside. Daily looking good for Ethereum. You can still always have those pullbacks within those dailies. Um, right now, if we were to see a pullback, I would look for us to maybe to come back down and retest this previous resistance here at around 215. Right now you're at 240, so that's one hell of a pullback. Roughly almost 240, so that's one hell of a pullback. So, you know, definitely be on the lookout for that. Um, let me see. A couple of other – and there's so much I want to go over. Sadly, I don't have the time. I'm just going to see if we got any questions or comments in closing right now before we knock this off. And I want to thank everybody that tuned in for the live show and those that will be tuning in listening in on New Money Matrix Podcast. Um. Peace. I know there will be an altcoin crypto that will move from the stagnant, which will render substantial gains off of Coinbase. I asked you about OX a week or so ago, and it shot from 20 to 53 cents. Yep. Now, that was a little more than a week. Yeah, a little bit longer than a week ago, because I actually played that move off of uh, off of uh, ZRX from around 20 up to uh, I actually I seen it go to 55 cents, was able to get out the way around 40 something cents. Right now, it's, it's consolidating, I think, around 30 some odd cents. Um. Still got to get the trailing stop loss correct. You may be able to actually find a um until I make one. You may be actually able to find a um an example of the trailing stop loss on YouTube. But basically, what it does is it trails you at a set amount of dollars. So if I put Bitcoin on a twenty dollars trailing stop loss, every time it right now it's going to have a stop loss twenty dollars from the point of entry, right? Every time it moves up, it's going to trail that stop loss at a twenty dollar um uh pullback. Right. So as it moves up, that that stop loss is following you up, 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 up. Now, if it pulls back and it goes below that twenty dollar threshold, then you're going to get hit. You know what I mean? So let me um, let me see. Let me make sure there's no questions over here on Facebook. 
which I'm not seeing none. And I don't know what's going on with Facebook. Sometimes they don't be coming through correctly. But um, with that being said, fam, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. I want to thank everybody that tuned in for the Early Rising Show of Coffee and Crypto with the Bitcoin Block Bully. Until the next one, until the next show, until the next podcast, peace, power, and prosperity, family. I am out of here.